Lovely. Thank you. Like Siobhan, I'm, I'm very much not your traditional librarian, in fact. Libraries came to me in the middle of my career. So I'm currently a senior information management consultant with a, a company that specialises in purely data and information management problem solving. So the way that I got here was that even though I have library qualifications and information science qualifications, and I've always had those, I actually started my career working with records and records management. So doing learning about the uh, information life cycle and how that can be applied, helping government organisations manage the extended information stores that they have in a manner that provided productivity and efficiency and enabled people to have the right information at the right time to make decisions that they needed to. I worked across government sector in both records and in the web management role and in this role I used those library skills to actually develop information architectures to look at the accessibility of websites. And this is where I actually started to gather a love of metadata. So at this point in time, I was assigning and writing metadata models for large scale government websites. I was developing information architectures for multiple domain sites, looking at navigation schemes and the way that people actually use the content. And I suppose that's what was a little bit different about my web management in that I came from it from the information perspective and not from the technical perspective. So I used to drive the techos mad because I'd say, right, well, I need this piece of information, I need to save it in one place and it needs to be surfaced in multiple times and it needs to be viewed by multiple people and look different for each of them. So I used to lay down the challenge but they were always underlined by a basic information management principle. I then moved into the library sector and I worked in the university area um, particularly in academic libraries and not for a long time I must say but I, I did actually go to the library there in the middle of my time before moving into research data and I spent a couple of years working with purely research data management and looking at establishing, well I did establish a national metadata exchange framework for science data. I was involved in the development of a data discovery portal for the Terrestrial Ecosystem Research Network, otherwise known as TURN, purely the sharing of science data across Australia to improve decisions about our biodiversity. And following on from that, I actually worked with the Biodiversity Climate Change Virtual Laboratory, which is another, it's a virtual laboratory that enabled scientists and researchers to go in use data that was open and available to them in formats that was consumable and actually run experiments in a virtual environment. And this was all based on the accessibility of the information, the quality of the information, the metadata behind the information and looking at new scientific discoveries. So those few years in my life were actually really, really productive and really influential. And at that time, I was um, quite involved with ANS and to this day still remain on the um, ANS RIPCS advisory board in that metadata role. Since that time, I've actually moved into the consulting field. And this has put me in the private sector for the first time in, in a career that spans over 25 years. The attraction to me um, was not so much the consulting component, but it was the broad uh, diversity and range of experiences that were available with the company that I work with. And that's a company that specialises purely in information and data management. So for me the attraction was to um, get in here and to get involved in information and data scenarios that maybe throughout my career, even though I've worked across records, I've worked across web libraries and with research data quite extensively, I may not have experience. So it was a rounding out of my career really. So here I am. The company that I'm working for, although this is irrelevant to today's presentation, it hones in on exactly why I'm here. The company has four practices, one for business which I don't work in at all. I work across the practices of information, data and also collaboration and productivity which for us is really looking at structuring information so that it can be exchanged and shared sort of nationally really. So I work across those three spaces. This is a company whose pure existence is to solve business problems through information and data. So my role here um, uses all of the skills that I've gathered throughout my career. Uh, it uses, and they're all founded in basic information science. Um, there's no rocket science to what I do. It takes some critical uh, thinking, a lot of analytical skills, 
using basic iron foundational skills and that's really what it is. For me, in my past six months of experience, just to share with you the types of things that I'm working across now, these are 12 engagements that I've actually led. So I do quite a bit of project management in this role and I'll run you through each of these so you can, you can share with me the diversity of the types of work I'm doing. I've done many information privacy assessments, so that's helping people who are looking at transitioning to software as a service type models where they're transferring their information offshore and they need to ensure that they are following privacy legislation and that they're protecting the identities of their clients or the information of the people that they hold. I've established data quality scores for, for large government agencies, so a way for them to measure the quality of their data, looking at all of the dimensions of data um, and I've set up processes for them to do that. I've developed intranet information architectures for um, in the utility sector, sector sorry, for large service delivery organisations and that involved a lot of collaboration and information sharing spaces and included multiple uses of information, so single source, multiple times, all of that. I've developed data quality frameworks again um, in New South Wales this time for New South Wales government, looking at uh, a whole framework for measuring data quality. So not just scores in this instance, but taking into account all of their structured, unstructured data and actually looking at raising the quality of that. And scoring in that component was just one of the things we looked at. Um, I've run open data environmental scans, so for particular topics, identifying what open data is available, assessing the quality of that, assigning metadata to that and putting that forward for one of the local universities to use in one of their science research projects. I've developed knowledge management blueprints that enable people to um, share the information that they have, but also to capture knowledge from personnel as they come and go and to keep that within the organisation and build on that. I've prepared information audits for ASX listed companies both in Australia and overseas, so massive great companies looking at you know, what information do we actually have, what format is it in, where is it, how do we access it, why have we got 10 copies of it, all of that sort of stuff. I've looked at, well I've developed information asset registers, um, again this one in the government sector, looking at recording the high value information assets looking at how they're being used, how use of those could be improved over time. I've done many an information uh, management policy review, particularly for university. I've, I've been involved recently in um, leading a large data analytics project, so looking at developing insights that haven't been, I suppose, recognised previously until such time as we sat down and we analysed some very large data sets and started to visualise some outcomes and provide um, alternate options and different insights back to that organisation, which enables them to uh, change their policy, to make new decisions, to do things in a different way because they've got this level of predictive analysis from their data that they've never actually had before. Uh, I'm currently working on an engagement to develop a business intelligent roadmap, which is looking at actually using data across a large organisation in a much more intelligent way. Um, data warehousing, looking at data marts and using data cubes for performance reporting, all of that sort of stuff. And I've developed, which is a bit of a staple, I've developed uh, quite a few data management plans over my time. Um, and again, working in this company as a senior consultant, we do work with both private and public sector organisations that do use data management plans, even if they're not in the university sector. And so that's a really um, comforting thing. So that's, for, that's me over six months. Uh, I've actually been consulting in this industry now for about 18 months. I just have so much diversity of experience working in this environment that it's really, really valuable and I suppose that's the one thing that keeps me here. The challenges for me are um, managing time, cost, quality and scope. I do lead these engagements, so you're dealing with a client, you're delivering to a deadline, you're keeping it within their cost, you've got to deliver high quality because that's what this company is based on and you, you have to obviously manage your scope. Um, for anyone who's done project management, you know that those things don't always come easy. Uh, so, you know, that's a constant battle. I struggle with work-life balance. That's, that seems to travel with me though. I think that's more of an issue of me than the job. Um, but particularly when I'm working to a deadline, I definitely have problems with that. 
it's always a challenge to maintain and, and develop skills. I'm currently in a position where I provide advice to organisations and therefore you need to know that the advice that you're providing is based on sound practices and principles that it can be backed up and that it is fit for purpose for the organisation that you're dealing with. So there's quite a bit of research involved in finding out what the position of that organisation is before you can actually provide advice. And I find keeping abreast of industry trends and developments is quite challenging because I'm working across such a diversity of areas. There's a lot of areas that I need to keep up with. In a nutshell, that's how I got here, the challenges I face and the type of work I do. All of this is based on my, my skills in managing information. And I suppose for anyone else that was interested in looking outside of a library, my advice would be to never limit yourself. These skills form the basis of so many problem solving activities. And if people knew how to manage their information better, there would be better decisions in a more timely manner based on much more accurate information. Keeping up to date for me is, is that struggle. I'm forever reading, I'm forever doing extra courses, reading blogs, looking at webinars, collaborating with colleagues. Um, I'm continually doing some form of study. So it, it is a constant, but all in all it's very rewarding. So that's it in a nutshell.